Yeah, g'day everyone. This is Nick from Perth Electric Scooter Repairs. And what I've got here is a group of uh, cells. It's a S1 in series. So I've only got one. If there's another set here joined up, uh, then it'd be an S2. All right. Um, and, uh, or should I say 2S? Uh, and then in parallel is 7. So it is a. Uh, 7p in 7 in parallel as opposed to in this case it is a 1s so it's 4.2 is the maximum voltage across that um, <clears throat> now if that's the case you know as they're in parallel the voltage is going to be the same on both sides because they're connected up directly all right on both sides normally i've clipped it the way at these now People were saying, ah, oh, but my battery, it's shown, you know, it's, um, you know, meant to be a 60 volt battery and it's coming up with 60 volts, but I only get half the range and, and uh, so on and so forth and whatnot. I'll show you why. And I'll show you why that um, reset, when people talk about resetting a BMS, which this is, which is inside the battery, connected up to all the battery cells, um, supposedly being able to reset it isn't the answer necessarily. And as far as I'm aware, not all battery management system boards can do that. The purpose of this board is to control the flow of um, current power um, coming in and out of the battery to the controller. Um, and that when it gets down to its minimum, it shuts down the discharge. Um, and then when you're charging up the cells, and you get to its um, specific voltage of 4.2, or if it's like, 10 wide 4.2 times 10 is 42 volts okay it'll shut off the uh, charging so you don't overcharge and you don't over discharge the cells which is vitally important okay now you may have cells that are a little bit higher or lower than the others okay um, and that will affect uh, the capacity of your battery for example if you imagine these cells had water in them okay and this one is a tick is at its full 4.2 liters for example but this one hasn't reached it. it's only at 3.6 the minimum is 2.8 liters all right so therefore at 3.6 which is the um, middle between the two uh, between 2.8 and 3.6 uh, uh, 4.2 is 3.6 is in the middle when this one's fully charged and you start discharging it okay when it gets down to 3.6 all right, it's done half of its charge or used it. This one in the meantime is doing exactly the same, but it's only half full and it'll get down to its minimum. And when it gets to minimum, this fella here will shut down and say you can't use it anymore, even though you still got half here. And then when you go to charge it up again, all right, this will start going up and so with this, but this of course is um, half full still. And then when it gets up to its top mark, it's showing 4.2, but this has only reached halfway. All right, and this sees 4.2, and I'll show you why as an example. It will shut down and won't charge it. So effectively, what you're doing is you're losing half of your capacity. All right. Now I'll show you an example of that problem. So what I've got here is um, uh, the positive side. It's your anode and your negative side and your cathode. Normally, when they're in parallel, as I said. Uh, one side all welded together and so the other side, but I've snipped them off now. They're not touching these two Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch the anode all right and Oh, hang on. I've got to turn on my voltmeter That would help wouldn't it and I'll touch the good one and It's showing 4.23 volts, which is at its maximum. Okay now if I check the bad one Okay I'll just that tab is that tab there is on the anode. You notice that it's dropping down. Shouldn't be doing that. It's almost like a capacitor. Capacitors do the same thing, they can discharge like that. So there might be a bit of resistance and a bit of capacitance or something like that. Uh, capacitors like two plates, two metal plates, and there's an insulator between the two, and it could be a bit of charge. Uh, a positive on one side and negative the other side, um, like a battery. This is what um, supercapacitors do. They, they act like batteries, but they've got very little charge in them. You've got um, energy in them. Um, 
Now, if I join these together, get them to touch, I'll just try and get them to touch like so. The bit's being loaded, so hopefully they're touching. No, not yet. Hang on a sec. Pause. Right, okay, so I've got them to touch, those two, and I'll put it onto this one here. And as you can see there, it's gone to 4.2 as well. So this bad one, instead of acting like a passive and just dropping down its voltage down from, I don't know, 3 volts or something like that, down to, probably drop down to something like um, half a volt or something like that, it's now shown 4.23. So you get the drift of it, you get the gist of it. Um, that this is holding this one up as well. So really, if that was open circuit, for example, which it's not, there is some capacitance uh, in there and probably high resistance, it's um, showing you the 4.2 that's across it. Okay, so as soon as I separate those two again, all right, and she is dropping down. She was at over 3 volts and she's dropping back down again. Well, the good one is still at 4.24 or 4.23. So that's what I mean, that you could turn around and say, well, you know, I just need to reset my um, BMS, wherever that's possible. This one, I don't think is possible. Um, I don't think there's a reset on it. But certainly on some scooters like the Segway uh, or on the Xiaomi's, they do have a reset button. Um, why they need that, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but one day I'll find out and get my facts right and uh, present it uh, to you guys. But in the meantime, what I'm getting at is, even if you supposedly reset your BMS, it won't make a difference. You need to um, open up the battery and do what I've done to really determine whether it's working or not. Now, what i also like to show you is if I can find one, where is it? Um, whoops, wrong side. Um, I'm just looking for, um, I think I've, I think I've already done them all. Yeah, I have. Hang on a sec. I'm just going to show you some. Yeah. So here we go. That's the anode side. If you want to know what the, uh, the canister itself You've got your cathode, which is your negative, or your ground, if you like. Uh, and the canister itself is the negative side. And then the nipple here is the positive side, and they're separated by an insulator. So you have to be really careful not to cross-touch these with anything metal. If you do, you're going to get a massive big um, spark. Um, and if you leave it there, it'll um, destroy the battery eventually, within minutes. Uh, so what we've got here, if you now uh, as a point there, that green stuff is paper. It's sticky on one side, and the aim of that is that when you put the nickel plating on, okay, all right, um, as you can see, I've, uh, which is welded, it stops the nickel plating from shorting from the anode to the pos uh, to the cathode, and um, so that's the purpose that you always got to have those, okay, and if you look at the color of it. It's green, and as far as I'm aware, practically every single one of them is green. There's no other color, as far as I'm aware. But look at the color of this. I'll just compare the two. Okay? So this one is, is dead. And what I think here is, what's happened here is that we've got leakage. All right? From internally the, um, the um, gunk stuff that's inside. Uh, and... Uh, in doing so, it's affected it. Let me just see if I can get some kind of reading on it. Normally these cells, all right, are around about in terms of resistance or ohms, is around about 50 milliohms, or if you like, 0 0.05 ohms, all right? So if you don't know what resistance means, um, Google it. So I've got the meter here now on the good one. Uh... Have I got it on ohms? Oh, it's on mega ohms. That's all right. So this is going to be tricky because I've only got two hands. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Uh, maybe what I need to do is on one of these I've got already. That'll that'll save me a lot of hassle. So I'll put it on there. Okay. 
and then I'll go across a good one and see if I get any reading. No, it shows it like a short. It's not. Okay, it's not a short. If I go into the bad one, it's got open. So, um, in other words, it is open circuit, effectively. All right. Even though that appears to be short, the good one, it would be um, 0 0.05. So you wouldn't get a reading. All right. This meter is not good enough for that. Uh, this one is. This will um, give me the correct reading. Um, I do have a meter that should give me the right reading, but I'm not fussed by that. Because part of the process of checking cells, um, I'll check the resistance as well. So, yeah. Um, if there is a short between the two anyway, uh, and you get if you get no voltage and it shows a short, then there's a short inside, um, and, and that's stuffed. Um, but this is clearly dead okay so um, let me check another one see this other um, one that's stuffed a good one good good one yeah another good one another bad one another good one oh come on come on now there we go okay so there you go you learn something every day, don't you? Now, be careful. If, if you are new to this stuff, <laughs> I, I, I've created Sparks, and I'll tell you now, you have to be really, really careful with these cells because if you've got enough of them, um, they can be just as dangerous as shorting a car battery. We're talking about, you know, a number of amps, probably 100 or 200 amps, I don't know exactly what they are. Uh, they do have what they call C rating. And and the higher the, the number, um, if you're into RC um, quadcopters or RC cars and planes, on those batteries, uh, they do have a C number. And the higher it is, hang on. Yeah, the higher the C is, ADC in this case, the more it can... Um, more current it, it can be extracted from it so more power can in, in a in in you know quicker time as it were so you can get more power out if it's a really low number then the performance of your rc would be um much lower but of course the higher the number the more expensive these things are um now i this is i use this with uh, something that i've made up this cable comes with um, a soldering iron which I use and uh, hold on yeah this one here I use this okay and be careful with that when you're not using it because you bend it and you will need to buy a new cable all right uh, this is the which model is this one here we go TS 80p there's a hundred one out a hundred P out I, I like this one um, uh, and it's quite portable so um, I use it to do repairs, uh, and this lasts forever. But yeah, this one would be like you could use in RC boats and, and the likes if you wanted to. Now, as I said, ADC. I don't know what the, these ones are. Um, might be able to get the data on them, although these are Chinese cells. But the Samsung ones uh, on their sites may, or the LG may specify what their C rating is. But I would say to be quite high, maybe 60 or something like that, which is high. Um, so that means they can just charge a lot of current. Okay, that's what I mean. You have to be really careful doing this. Ideally, if you don't know anything about electronics, electricity or anything like that, just don't do it. Okay, um, it's just too risky to play around with batteries. That's the reason why you'll find that a lot of people have had their houses go up or their scooters um, catch fire is that they're doing things they shouldn't be doing um, I've got a scooter here which you'll note in one of my videos that I've got a scooter here because someone hooked up an 80 volt charger to a 60 volt scooter and it caught fire um, it's um, I'm rebuilding it or will eventually rebuild it but um, touch wood I've not known of a scooter repair shop a proper one 
best way I can describe is one that sells and has technicians who are trained. I've not heard of one um, catching fire. Um, so it is dangerous and it's something not to play with. Okay, that includes this because this has the full voltage across it. Um, and uh, yeah, just don't play with it. Okay. All right, that'll do for now. I think I've educated you enough on um, issues with batteries and um, making a point about um, you, uh, when you're thinking that you're fixing it when really you're not. And this is an example of why it won't work what you're suggesting. Even if you're like in the Xiaomi electric scooters like the M365, etc., got a reset on their BMS, um, that may not fix it. Okay. Anyway, bye for now.